It's day 10 and the race to get south is well and truly on. Group Armour's inshore gamble has failed to pay off and the French team have frustratedly been watching the fleet charge south as they've struggled to head west to intercept them. In line with our plans from the past two days, what we're trying to do now is to get as far over to the west as we can, so as to hook onto the easterly winds, which will enable us to head straight for the equator. Leading that charge south are both Puma and Telefonica, neck and neck, matching 20 knot boat speeds. For Puma, it's a navigational nightmare. We're looking for, we're just looking for the path of least resistance. We've got trade winds this side, trade winds the other side, and we're looking for the shortest way through with the least, uh, least amount of uh, instability, I guess. But uh, no, it, it's, a, it's, it's a painful process, but uh, this time of the year helps starting the race a little bit later. Uh, doldrums are generally a little bit narrower, but um, it is a little bit messy on the bow. I'm, I'm confused and I don't mind tell, telling you. <laughs> Despite this, Puma have notched up a 150 mile lead over Camper, who don't seem overly concerned. Typical of tradewind sailing, here we are sitting on you know, roughly 19, 20 knots of boat speed. Nice, easy sailing, and uh, everyone's pretty relaxed about it all. Really nice. As the fleet steams towards Fernando de Noronha, the island they must round before they head for Cape Town, Telefonica have the edge over Puma in what Ica Martinez knows will be a crucial phase of this leg. We are getting to the equator and calm seas. It's going to be one of the most important points of what is left of leg one. Join us again to see which boat can steal the march.